Welcome to another video and welcome to Lambert W function. We're going to be differentiating the Lambert W function without too much details, but I want to show you a problem that because you know the natural log function, you can solve. It's, it's an equation you can solve. And then I'm going to show you another problem that looks like it that no matter how hard you try, you cannot solve it using your natural log function. And you might initially think you can solve it, and then you're gonna end up coming back to Mr. Lambert for help. Let's get into it. So let's solve the first problem. Here we have one half of e to the x is equal to 2e. We're trying to find x. Remember, the mission is to find x. There are so many ways to solve this. But right before you start, you could tell that as long as that x is sitting up there on top of e, when I take the natural log of both sides, I'm going to get my answer ultimately, whatever other strategy I adopt. So, in this case, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 so that I have e to the x is equal to 4e. Oh, almost done, right? I can divide both sides by e or I can just take the natural log of both sides. You see, if I take ln of e to the x, I'm getting the natural log of 4e. And what do I get? I'm going to get um, x comes out of this because natural log undoes what e does. You see that? This is essential. The reason we take the natural log of both sides is because this is the inverse function of the exponential function. So we're going to get x. What do we get on this side? Natural log of 4e. If you want to be fancy, you might as well break it into 2. Natural log of 4 plus the natural log of e. But we know that the natural log of e is 1, right? Because this is e to the power 1, so we can have this to be just ln of 4 plus 1. That's the answer. This doesn't look difficult. It looks very entertaining, very interesting. So, what happens if the teacher decides to make things a little bit more complicated? Right before your eyes, I'm going to change what the problem is. I'm just going to say, instead of writing one here. I'm going to put x here. So we have two x's. One is the argument of the exponential function and one is multiplying the exponential function. We can actually get rid of this too. Suppose this was the problem you got from the beginning. Let's give it a shot. So let's just try and do what we can do, okay? Let's multiply both sides by 2. We're going to have x e to the x equals 4 e. Okay, what did we do before? We took the natural log of both sides. Uh, that's going to be hard, because if you take the natural log of both sides, this one will come down if this wasn't here. But this guy is here. Now, but if you move it to this side, um, okay, let's just take the natural log. So ln of x plus e to the x will be equal to natural log of 4e, okay? Uh, no, what did I write? x, just x. So I was thinking too hard. Now I can split this to be natural log of x plus the natural log of e to the x plus, okay, equals. I remember that the answer from the previous exercise was 1 plus natural log of 4, okay? Oh, we can get the x out of this. So this is ln of x plus x equals 1 plus natural log of 4. Okay. <laughs> so x is stuck inside the natural log function. And no matter how hard you try, you will never get this x out. So the natural log function cannot solve the product log function. Whenever x multiplies e to the x, it doesn't matter how hard you try. The natural log simple algebraic elementary function strategy we adopt does not work. And that's why we're happy 
for the Lambert W function because it is designed to take care of this. And that's why it is called the product log function. I think it's actually one word. It's product log function, no hyphen. It's a product log function and you have to use it just as you have to use the natural log function when you're dealing with e to the x. So now that you've seen why we need another function other than the natural log function because some equations cannot be solved, let us see how this behaves in relation to a product of x and e to the x. Let's start with the definition of the Lambert W function. It is special because it only relates to this kind of expression or function. Whenever f of x is equal to x times e to the x, then the inverse function, instead of it being the natural log function, will become the product log function, which we call the Lambert W function. And remember that when we did natural log and e to the x, natural log will undo e to the x, and e to the x will undo natural log. The same thing is what happens for all inverse function. Inverse secant will undo secant. Inverse sine will undo sine. Sine will undo inverse sine. Okay, so the same thing here, which means if you take the output from this interaction and you plug it inside here, you're going to get back your original x. And if you take the output from this and you plug it in here, you're going to get your original x. So what does this mean? By definition, so by definition, we know that f of f inverse of x equals x. We also know that f inverse of f of x equals x. It doesn't matter which one is in, the composition of two inverse functions will always give you the input. So let's do that here. So let's see. Let's assume we take this and we plug it in here. Look, f of the inverse function which is the Lambert W function will be equal to the Lambert W function of x e to the Lambert W function of x. And your answer is supposed to be x. Similarly, we know w of this x e to the x will be equal to what, is, what does w do? It just gives you back your x. That's it. So, we want to find the derivative of w of x. That's what we want to find, the derivative of w of x. And see, the method I want to take is the implicit differentiation method. We're going to go here. So, let's take the derivative. We know that w of x e to the w of x is equal to x. If I take the derivative of both sides, d dx of w of x, e to the w of x, it will be equal to the derivative of x. And what does this give me? Well, here, it is the product of two functions of x, right? So I have to apply the product rule along with the, what other rule is there? The product rule and I have to do implicit differentiation because this w of x is a function of x. Suppose it was y, okay? But let's just leave it that way. So watch this. Applying the product rule, I'm going to differentiate the first and keep the second. So I'm going to differentiate the first and remember that's our mission. That's the derivative of w of x. Okay, so I differentiate the first, then I keep the second. Plus, I'm going to keep the first, and I'll differentiate the second. How do you differentiate this? When you differentiate e to anything, it's e to that thing multiplied by the derivative of that thing, right? So it's going to be um, e to the w of x times the derivative of whatever is on top. That's how you differentiate all exponential functions. So we're done with the left-hand side using the product rule, and on the right-hand side, the derivative of this is 1. So watch this. 
This is the guy we're looking for. It's here and it's here. If we factor it out, we have W prime of X into, we have E to the W of X plus what is left here? Oh, we have W of X, E to the W of X. Nice is equal to 1. So, W prime of X is equal to 1 over, oh, I got E to the W of X in two places. You see that? So, E to the W of X, I can factor it out, and what is left inside? It's 1 plus W of X. Nice. This is one way to write your derivative. Remember, there's this interaction between W of X and E to the X such that you can write this another way. I actually like this, this looks beautiful. But let's go back, let's go back, let's go back here. If we want, don't wanna write this here, E to the W of X, we don't wanna write E, we don't want E to show up. We just want everything to be in terms of W of X, you know? Just like a polynomial, you don't want a strange function. You want everything to be in terms of W of X. Let's go here. We can represent this answer we just got and say from this relationship, if we want to isolate this, we know that E to the W of X will be equal to X divided by W of X. So that means this derivative we got we can replace this by, okay, implies W prime of X, the derivative will be equal to one over X over W of X multiplied by one plus W of X. One plus W of X. We can flip this and take it up, right? So that W prime of X will be equal to W of X, it goes up, divided by X times 1 plus W of X. Now, this is the most common derivative of this that you will see. There's a third version, okay? But that's on you. See, we can actually replace all of this, this X here, so that there's no X at all. Okay, you can just say this is W e to the W of X, and then you replace this X with this, and it's going to look a little weird, but it's still beautiful. Okay, never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.